Peter here, aka Peter Forgotten, for another episode of the Mother Review Show with the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review. And we're entering the second month of Scream Best. <laughs> And it's a and it's a nice night for a horror movie, very rainy and spooky, and yes, the hurricane is coming. So yeah. Now during the first month of Screen Fest, I took a look at um, Night of the Demons, which was a very good horror film. I definitely think it's underrated, and it has a lot going for it. It's got a good cast, likable characters. And it's just all around a good film. It has good special effects, too. Good practical effects, which is what people in today's standards should be looking into. If they want a good horror film to be made today, this is what they should be looking at. Not the stuff that they're putting out today with the CGI computer blood, which looks fake as heck when you could go out to the drugstore and get a box of corn syrup and play... Or not Play-Doh, but... Um, get a box of corn syrup and color dye. That's easier than having to CG. But yeah, Night of the Demons was a very good film. And I guess someone named Brian Tenchard Schmidt saw the film's film and absolutely loved it and said, Hey, if I if the film was that good when it came out and it has gotten in this cult following, then maybe I should continue the story, even though that that ending was very well done. What should I do now? Oh yeah, I'll bring in Night of the Demons two. Yeah, Angela's throwing another party. Trick or treat, sucker! Yes, it is. Yeah, they advertise a film like that. By the way, I gotta I have to bring this up right now. I love this cover. I think this is a very cool cover. This was the cover that Booger Boy Meister had and I remember I saw this cover, I was like, Holy heck, that is an awesome cover. For yeah, um, Angela's eating like a skull on a stick and I thought that was pretty cool. Just really awesome bad A cover. I would love a poster of this on my wall, literally. I miss it when covers like Today's standards look this cool and everything. And just like the, like, um, Anaconda 3. Those, that cover looks like trash. Lake Placid versus Anaconda, Lake Placid 2. They photoshop the covers. I miss it when they do it like this. But yeah. But yeah, Night of the Demons 2 actually found for a good price at, on Amazon. Ten dollars. And, um, because this is a very rare movie. And everywhere I look, the movie's like a hundred dollars. But I was still willing. I was still willing to pay that much, seeing as how I loved the first Night of the Demons, and I was actually, and I was actually looking to see if the second one was any good. Cause I looked on Amazon. A lot of people really have bad things to say about this sequel, and I think um, a lot of people um, share the the same frustration that I think um, everybody else shares. That when you talk about this movie. Or anybody who compares it to the first one, they all share the same frustrations. Now, I have to say, I thought that this was a worthwhile sequel. I really thought it was a fan... Well, I wouldn't say it was a fantastic sequel, but it's a very good sequel. It's definitely a very worthwhile sequel. It's not as good as the first, I will say that. The, uh, I... I do say that in this particular series, the first one is the best, but um, I thought this was a very good follow-up to um, a film that I never think got that much attention, and I think that it was a good way to continue the story. But yeah, I actually thought it was pretty good, and I'll get into why later. But Night of the Demons 2 was made in 1994, and it was directed by Brian Chenchard Smith, who is a very below-the-radar director. Um, I haven't seen him do much. Um, not really sure what he, if he's doing something today, so don't really know much about the guy. Um, I do know that it is not the guy who directed the first one. The first one was Kevin Estini, and I don't think... 
And I do know that later in the third one, the writer of the first one would go on to direct Night of the Demons 3. I'm not sure this guy had anything to do with the first one, but if he did, tell me in the comments. But the film stars Bobby Jacob, Amelia Kincaid, um, and Zoe Trilling. So you got a pretty good cast here. But I'll get into what I enjoy about the film later. But anyway... The basic plot of the film is basically this. It's basically, um, it basically we find out that, um, that, um, Angela, the villain from the first one, had a sister named, named Michelle, or as they like to call her, Moose, who is now in boarding school. And she's completely traumatized by all what her sister did. And she has a hard time fitting in with the rest of the girls. The rest of the girls look at her like a freak. She's bullied. She's picked on. And the only person that's actually nice to her is Mother Superior there. Who is one of the... Who's one of the pre the nuns there. And... And basically... So like during all that, we learn that um, basically we have um, at the school we have these three these kids. Um, we have one girl named um, Shirley, who basically your average run of the mill girl who wants to get guys and is being the bad girl attitude. So yeah, and there's also um, a few other kids. Um, a lot of them can't remember, but they all decide that um, after they get in trouble one time, they get banned from the dance because the nun um, has um, a pretty big, um, like, how do I put it? She has a pretty big, uh, how do I, I don't know how to say it, I'll just say, um, she gets, um, What's there a way to put this? Um, she's very strict when it comes to stuff like sex, and um, she's very, um, just very, just does not appreciate that stuff that kids should wait. And one time she sees these kids fooling around on a tennis court, and she's like, hey, you're not going to the dance because of what you did. And because of all that, they dis the bad girl, Shirley, invites them all to this Halloween dance at Whole House, the same place from the first movie. And, of course, they take Michelle along. And one thing I gotta ask is, you're taking a girl that you don't like along with you. With you. And, um, when you take the girl with you, um... Um, why would you even decide to do that? Like, you're the guy, you're the ones who picked on her in the beginning, say bad stuff about her, even though there was one of the girls there who was actually very nice to her. But, overall, these kids hate her, and there's no point to bring her. Probably because they think she might tell on her, I forget. But, um, also, they go to the whole house, and... They accidentally release, An I would say release Angela, because she was already there, played by Amelia Kincaid. Um, not a lot of these actors I know, by the way, um, so uh, you might hear, you might not hear me saying the, all the names and such. Not a lot of the actors I know, but, um, but uh, Angela follows them back to the school, and she pretty much starts um, turning the kids who came to the house into demons, and now she's out to get her little sister, who's at the school and is at the dance, too. So, uh, pretty much she's possessing all the kids. And there's also the sub-story about this one kid who um, is into demons and all that. He believes the whole Angela story, so now he joins the fight and is helping them fight back, too. So now they're, they decide they're all going to band together and take down Angela. Will they be able to end Angela's, Angela's fiery fury once and for all? Or will they be the victims of the fiery girl of hell who thinks that the party should never, ever, 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 ever end?
ever end. <laughs> but yeah, Night of the Demons 2 is definitely a good sequel. Uh, there's not really much to talk about it because uh, it's basically be like one. I'll get to this complaint that I do have. Some of the stuff in this film feels like a retread of the first film. A lot of the whole, um, um, a lot of the whole, basically the whole, um, characters and such, they feel retread of the characters from the first film. That's my biggest problem with the film, is that they're, that it feels like a cookie cutter cutout of the original movie's formula, and... Everything that worked in that film is a weakness here because it it doesn't have the charm of the first one. It doesn't hold that um it doesn't hold that vibe that the first one offered and it just completely ignores what I enjoyed about the first one or rather what anybody else enjoyed about the first one. So, yeah. But I just felt they didn't add much to it, too. Like, they didn't add much to the story. But, you may be thinking, I hate this film, but I don't. I really don't. I think that even though I like the tone of the film, I like some of the scenes in it where, um, there are scenes where it feels like they're keeping with the tone of the first film. And, because the first one was more of a tongue-in-cheek core film that... Basically, um, was showing off the fact that it, it was comedy and all that, and, um, there were scenes in it where you basically, um, uh, wanted to, were laughing at the comedy, but also being scared, and I appreciate that with the film. I definitely do like its whole chung and cheek humor from the first one, and the first, the second one really does carry that in, and, but there is something to say. It fo it seems to focus more on the tongue and cheek humor and less on the scares and such and less on the whole demon thing. thing. But it's still I thought I still thought that there were some instances where the story worked, but there were also some instances where the story seems to fall flat and it kind of wanders. It wanders around, and it does not know where to go. That's the the biggest problem with the film is the story because it tries to be like it's trying to be the first one, and it just it falls flat. It runs out of ideas, and you're like, and you're waiting for the next scene where at least something fun happens. But it feels like some scenes of the film they're just wandering around, and you have no idea what to do. And they, I think they didn't have any idea what to do on the next scene. So, that's probably the biggest thing I do gotta say, is definitely the story. Because it feels a lot like the copy and paste of the first one. One. Because, yeah, it's set in a new location and all that. Yeah, it's set in a new location. But some of the kids feel like retreads of the kids from the first film. So, yeah. But the acting here is pretty good, too. Um, some of the characters in the film, uh, as I said, most are the characters from the first film, but they bring in some characters that I do enjoy. For example, I this is one thing that I do admire about the film, because at the beginning of the film, um, Horror Guru brought this up, and I thought, and I watched his review after I saw the film, and I made this assumption, but at the beginning of the film, the nun who is a blight, who hates sex and all that, um, to, at the beginning of the film, you hate her guts, and you like this other priest more who's actually nicer to the guys and understands what sex is and all that. That he be, he's like he was likable at the beginning, but once the scene, but once it switches over and become and they see more of the demons and what they're capable and all that, then the then your per, then your opinion on the character starts to change, like. The priest um, you don't like, and now the nun you like. Because at the end of the film, they go on full fury with the whole characters and such. They go on full fury. And those scenes were actually really cool. Um, the super soakers were awesome. Like, those super soaker scenes I thought were the coolest parts of the film. Film, but... 
The acting from them is solid. And also, Amelia Kincaid, I think, fits back into her role like a glove, despite the fact that she looks a little bit older. Um, it was made... Um, six years... Six or eight. I could be wrong, but I think it's six years after the first one. But... I thought they did this film really well. Um, I definitely think that the acting is top-notch. Um, definitely nothing special, nothing Oscar-worthy. But so, but other than those characters I mentioned, I did not like some of the main characters. I mean, the girl who's nice and everything, she's fine. But besides that, most of them feel like carbon copies of the characters from the first film. Still, they still have their moments. Now, um, now when you come down to it, the one thing you do want to say is the demon effects. The demon effects are definitely the one thing you come to see from a film like this. I think the demon effects are pretty good. Uh, the, the makeup on them I thought was really cool. Like, when um, the priest becomes the a demon, that scene was actually really cool. I didn't see that coming. Um, the, the makeup on Angela when she shows off her true form, I thought that scene was actually really cool. Um... Also, like, there's a scene towards the end when Angela turns into a huge snake, and, um, they use that. Those scenes are actually pretty good, too. Um, the, so the effects in the film are actually pretty good, so, and they're actually bloody in some points. There are some very weird scenes, too, like the part with the lipstick, and no, it doesn't involve what Linnea Quigley did, but... Definitely a really well-thought-out well scene. Definitely a different scene, too. It's a scene that I've not seen in a horror film before. And there's a tad bit of CGI, and I was actually surprised to find that there was a little bit of CGI. Like, I don't want to say which, but for some reason, I didn't mind it. Usually, I'll go on rant and say, like, oh, CGI in this film stinks, and say how much it's bad and all that. I didn't find it that bad. I don't think it. I don't think CGI back then looks as fake as CGI today. I mean, the Thing remake. What the heck did they do with that film? But I do think the makeup's very well done. The the effects and all that, and definitely a really really well done sequel. Definitely worthwhile. That being said, it does have its problems. Like, I did say the carbon copy thing. I also... I also didn't care for um, the whole idea of... Um, of these... of um, What was it? What was that one scene? I didn't care for the idea of um, the kid with the whole um, addiction to the devil and all that. Because they take it nowhere. They go nowhere with the idea. Like the kid could use the powers of the thing to help him defeat the demon. But no, he just sits there stunned that he even summoned Angela. Because he tries to summon her at one point and... Um, and uh, he basically um, tries to pull him in the mirror. Just like that scene in the first film where they played that game. But still, overall, Night of the Demons 2, while not as good as the first, is still a worthwhile sequel. And I definitely think it follows up to the first really well. Despite having carbon copy characters, it still re retains itself from all that. And it still offers a great amount of effects and all that, so... Overall, the movie is definitely far from bad, as everybody says, and I definitely do think that the film deserves a watch. If you're a fan of the first one, you'll like this one. So, really, I definitely recommend you check out Night of the Demons 2. I definitely would rent it first, and if you like, and if you liked it, I definitely would buy it. But, overall, I don't want to give it a 9, because I feel that it's being too nice, but I also don't want to give it a 6, because that's being a little too harsh. So... I'm going to give it a 7.9 out of 10. So, yeah, definitely not as good as the first, but it still offers and has its moments. And 
really, I really do think that it's definitely a film you would want to watch around Halloween. So definitely check that film out. But that is my review on Night of the Demons 2, and you might see Night of the Demons 3 another time. And next time I'm going to be watching an American we review in American World from London, then VHS. Definitely excited to talk about those films, and I'll see you guys later. Tell me what you guys think of Night of the Demons 2. Comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.